I'm going to show you how to use Azure Data Migration Services from start to finish. We're going to move a database from SQL Server 2008 into Azure SQL Database Managed Instance. And we're going to watch how it works in real time and how it can move a database with very low downtime. So the first thing you do is you create a resource and you type in migration. And then you'll get a list of options and we want Azure Database Migration Service. So when we click on it and we click Create, it asks us for a few things. Um, the first thing is our subscription, then our resource group. I created a resource group where I have um, the Azure SQL Database Managed Instance in it, and I also have a VM in it with 2008 um, and a database there. So I select that one, and then I enter a service name, and I just might use Past Demo 2019 um, Ike to be um, unique. And we might put migration in there too, so that we know that it's there. And then I put a location, and the location I'm going to place it in is the same location that I know I have my other services in, West US 2. And then it says um, which pricing tier would you want, and you can configure the pricing tier. I'm going to select um, premium here, and then you can choose the number of V cores that you want want to use. Um, for my V cores, I actually don't have um, very uh, a big need for the demo because the database is very, very small. So you can just choose the minimum if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And then you can look at the networking tags if you need to. Um, my managed instance uh, VPN is over here. So I can choose that one so that I make sure that it's being used on the right one. And then just click review and create. And it shows you all of your options and you can confirm them and click create. Now the thing about this is the deployment takes quite a long time. So I'm actually going to stop the video and then start it again once the, once the deployment is completed. Thanks. So remember that our goal in using um, database migration services is that we are moving this database, Tailspin Toys, from SQL Server 2008 over to this managed instance that I created that doesn't have any databases. And our goal is that we want to do an online migration with no downtime, which means that when we do the migration, it's effectively going to use log shipping, but it's going to restore the log so that other logs are prepared to be restored over it and, until we're ready to actually make the cut over. That's what we're doing. So before we can begin, what we want to do, by the way, is once you've created the migration service, it's going to come up just like this, and you're going to want to click New Migration Project. But before you do that, we need a service principle, and we also need to collect some information so that the service can back up and restore our database and store those files in a storage account. So I'm going to show you how to create the service principle and collect the appropriate information that you're looking for. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to enter into what we call the Cloud Shell prompt. So in your portal, you'll see a Cloud Shell right here at the top please click that. And then in the portal, we want to see an account list. So the way we'll get that account list is we'll just type in az account list dash dash output table and we'll click enter. And what we're doing here is we're just making sure that we understand which subscription ID that I'm using. And I really only have one, but some people have more than one. So it's important to know which one you're using. And then once you have that, we're going to type in a command and this command, and I'll leave it on the screen for a second, is going to create a service project with an app ID and a password that we can use in the database migration assistant. Now, what you'll notice is that my subscription ID right here, this is that I, what I want to do is I want to take the subscription ID from the earlier command. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to grab this subscription ID out of here. And then I'm going to paste it right there. Okay. And then the resource group is actually the resource group that I've been using um, for all of my projects. Um, and it's you can see it right here. So if I copy SQL MI West US and I go to the end of this command and I delete this prompt, I can just copy that there. And now when I click Enter, it's going to go and create a few things, and it's going to drop back and respond to me with a little bit of JSON. And the JSON that I care about will be the app ID and the password. 
So I want to capture those values in my response here. OK, it aired out the first time, but that might be OK. What I found is that just because it airs out the first time, if you just go ahead and run it again, it's often successful the second time. I don't know why. See, it worked that time. So now, do you see where I have app ID here? I'm going to take I'm going to take all of these values, actually. That's fine. It's probably easier to do that. And just save it off into Notepad so that I can use them later. Okay. So the next step I'm going to do is just to make sure that that AZ role assignment actually has contributor permission. And so I'm just going to paste a quick command here, um, a role assignment. And I'm going to create that that Tailspin Toys role that I have is a contributor. And now once I've done that, I can exit out of the CLI and I'm ready to begin a new migration project. So I'm going to click New Migration Project. So for project name, I'll just enter Pass Demo. And then I'm migrating from that SQL Server 2008, the VM, to Manage Instance. So I'll check Manage Instance. Now for a type of activity, you can do an offline migration, which is just a simple backup and restore, and the database will be available to you. But for us, what we're going to do is an online migration, which is more like log shipping. It'll restore the logs in a mode where new logs can be restored over it until we're ready to actually do the migration. And I'll click Save. And then once I've got everything selected correctly, I'll create and run the activity. Now, it's going to collect information about our source and target and databases and some migration settings about how it's going to get a hold of the backup files and where it's going to save the restore files. So for us, it, it's asking for an instance name, but I found that if you use the Azure portal and you go to your virtual machine, which is what I've done here, you're better off just using the public IP address. So I'll go back and just enter the public IP address. And then for Windows authentication, I'll use the SQL MI user account that has local admin permissions to that VM, and I'll click Trust Server Certificate and click Save. Then it's going to ask information about the target, and that's when we need that JSON that we had before. So what we'll do is we'll use this as the app ID, which was in our output. And then for the key, we'll use the password setting here as the key. And then it says, OK, which subscription and which MI server? So we'll pick the right MI server. And then it asks for the SQL Server username and password. This username is one that I created earlier that was um, SQL MI user. And then the password, I'm just going to copy in from another screen so that you don't see my password. And then I'll click Save. And then it asks, which database are we interested in moving? And it's the Tailspin Toys database. And we'll click Save. And then it says, where can I find the BAK files that we're looking for? And those BAK files are do to do It's in a share that we created earlier on the SQL Server. So we're going to just put that path to a share that we already have, DMS backups. And then it says, we want to impersonate a user account. And I don't know why it always puts that old key in there, but that's not the one we want. The one we want is the SQL MI user, this one. Doo -doo -doo. Yep, that one. And then the password is probably fine, but just in case it isn't, I'll copy it back in so we don't get an error. OK. And then it asks for a storage account, and we'll pick the right storage account. So um, in my case, it's called SQL MI Store with a bunch of unique characters so that there's no conflicts. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. We'll call the activity name Pass Demo. We're looking at the target server name is fine. The source server name is fine. And we'll click Run Migration. Now, you'll get the activity coming, kind of coming down here. And you can just click Refresh. And you can see, like, OK, full backup loading, log shipping in progress. You can kind of watch it. If you click on it, though, you'll get even more information. So it's now uploaded the database backup and the TRN initially. 
and then if you refresh, it'll tell you that it's restored. So if you come down here and refresh our databases, you can see that it's restoring a database right here, which is fine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a record to the game table just to prove that we're doing an online cutover. So I just go ahead and run this insert and just prove that that record got added. You can see the past demo game is there. And I did that in the original source server just so that we can prove out that the cutover, that that record actually made it in an, an online fashion over to managed instance. Now, just real quick, we're going to do a quick TRN backup. And we're going to do that so that log shipping sends that log file back over to the managed instance while we do the cutover. Where is this button right here? And it says, when you're ready to do a migration cutover, perform the following steps. Stop all the transactions, right? I mean, you're going to basically move the database. So the application is going to go down for just a little bit. So if you're ready for this, we're going to go ahead and confirm and click apply. We can see that it completed. And now we can come back here and we can see that it renamed the database to Tailspin Toys. And if we open it up and we look at the game, you can see that our new record has replicated over there. So that's how you do an online migration with Azure Database Migration Services. And I hope that was really helpful. And I'm sorry the demo blew up in my past summit pre-con, but hopefully this helps everybody who attended. Thanks. Have a great day, guys. Thanks. Let me know if you have any questions.